Hey everyone, and welcome back to Art à la Carte. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the creative process that I go through in creating a piece. Well, at least one of the different types of creative process that I have. There are several different kinds. So sometimes when I create a piece, I know exactly what I want it to look like. I have a very clear picture in my mind that I then take and translate onto paper. Other times it's a complete accident. I'll just be doodling or sketching and something will just connect on the paper and I go, whoa, this is something bigger than I, I originally intended it to be. And that's an awesome adventure. The hardest ones for me are the ones that I have a really good theme or partial idea and it's really strong but I can't see the full picture like I can't see exactly how the pose is maybe I'll see some element of the picture and I have to try to get that all out and for me that can be the most frustrating because it's a lot of trial and error until I finally fully realize what the picture is and that is what this piece is when I began working on this piece I had an idea of a piece I wanted to do and I really didn't think it would take me very long um, I was just going to sketch it up for this video and as I was drawing it it just the first sketch of it just didn't turn out the way I wanted I mean it was an okay sketch there was nothing wrong with the sketch but it just wasn't what I was feeling inside it, it wasn't the piece that I wanted to create and a lot of times as an artist this is the point where you just go yeah well I tried oh well another day but I really wanted the piece that I was thinking about. I didn't want this piece. So I decided to change the, the topic of this video as I was creating and recreating and recreating this piece to, to, more, to be a video more about persevering through a piece and then give you some ideas and some hints and tips on how to tackle a piece that maybe isn't coming together the way you want it. So feel free to join me on this journey I had in creating a piece that um, ironically is called Woodland Muse. <laughs> so I could have used a little bit more of a muse in creating this piece. So first let me tell you how, the idea that I had for this piece. As many of you know, I am a huge fan of Miyazaki and his work. I love all of his films. And the first one that I saw was My Neighbor Totoro. And so I wanted to do a piece inspired by that, that had elements or themes running with that, but that wasn't just, I didn't want to just draw Totoro. So I decided to draw fairy-like, but not a fairy, but person sitting in the tree, playing her flute, but have just a lot of the elements and feels for that. I knew I wanted her to play some sort of flute, but the first couple sketches I had just wouldn't work in. And I knew I wanted the color scheme to be a little bit more muted. I wanted it to be in the evening or at night um, without being super dark. I wanted to be, still be able to see everything very clearly, but not a lot of just bright, vibrant colors. I wanted just that really kind of mysterious, faded, muted tones to it. So originally I started this sketch out on pencil and when that didn't work, uh, a tip that I have is to try a different way to create your sketches. So since sketching on paper wasn't working for me, I switched to sketching digitally. If you don't have the ability to sketch digitally, uh, just trying a different sketchbook or a different type of paper or a different kind of tool, whether you're using a pencil, switch to a pen or a piece of chalk, something like that, can really help you to kind of come at this piece in a different angle and help you maybe figure out what it is that you are seeing inside your head but just not able to get it on paper. I also looked at a lot of different photo references of people sitting, um, playing instruments, things like that. I didn't want to take, you know, just one picture, but I wanted to kind of uh, get some ideas. So I just went through a bunch of different photos, and I find going on places like DeviantArt has a lot of galleries that are are just artists or photographers that just take photos for photo references and I find so much inspiration looking at those photos and just kind of different angles of people. Um, so if you haven't checked out Deviant Art accounts, I'll leave one of my favorites linked in the description box below. Another tip I have is changing the direction. So if you have a character facing left, switch them around so they're facing right. Just simply um, pulling them in a different direction can sometimes help you to find the angle that you want. Um, I did it earlier in this piece and you just saw really briefly. I also created what are called thumbnails, which sometimes when you're creating a piece, you're just so worried about getting it perfect that you lose the feeling for it. So making a really small scribbly sketch 
off to the side, just kind of blocking in the shapes can sometimes help trigger the inspiration that you need or the position or the angle or whatever it is that you're looking for, it can help trigger that. So finally, I think I did about four or five different sketches before I finally came up with the one I wanted. And because I was doing this digitally, I was kind of thinking, well, shall I color it digitally? I have just finished my last piece digitally and I kind of wanted not, I didn't want to do another digital piece right away. So I decided that I wanted to go ahead and transfer that over and do it traditionally. But I really liked how the sketch looked and I knew that if I tried to trace it over onto paper or um, copy it onto paper or even try to do a cleaned up line art and then print that line art onto paper, I was going to lose the feel. So I decided to take a little bit of a gamble and just kind of clean up the sketch a little bit and then make it really light and then print it off so it was just a hint of the sketch underneath that and I would color over top of that. I wasn't sure if that would turn out well or if you, it would be too messy or if, you know, I was taking a little bit of a gamble, but that's what art is all about is when you think, oh, what, what would happen if you did this and this to something? It, you just have to do it and figure out if it works or not. I get a lot of emails and messages from you guys asking, can I put this paint on that paper? Or can I mix this kind of paint and that kind of paint? Or what happens if I do this or that? And my, you know, and, they, and you guys want me to do that. Well, that's, I mean, I don't mind taking on your ideas, but that's half the fun of being an artist is having an idea and then just playing with it and seeing if it works, see what happens. So I went ahead and did it and I actually really liked how it turned out. Um, again, though, I took the opacity level way down. So it was a very, it was almost like you couldn't see it. And once I started putting the colors and everything on that, you really could hardly see the sketch at all. In fact, at the end, I ended up going back over with some darker colored pencils and pulling in a little bit of the line art and making it a little bit crisper. So this piece took insanely longer than I thought it would be. Not as long as my time piece, but I did work a long time on this uh, yesterday because I wanted it to, for today's video. And that's why today's video is a little bit on the late side. But I wanted to have this a finished piece. I didn't want to talk about persevering through a picture and then be, well, I haven't finished it yet. I wanted you to be able to see the finished piece for this video. I went ahead and pushed it all the way through. And I really do like how it turned out. I liked the kind of the framework. It's kind of similar framework to the timepiece, which I'm, I'm, I'm liking that circle frame. I'm kind of, it's my circle movement. Yeah, I'm planning on getting some posters and uh, prints for my Etsy shop for this, but I went ahead and uploaded this to my Redbubble shop. So if you don't want to wait for the Etsy prints to come in, you can head over to Redbubble and there is a whole bunch of different products that you can get, not just in this piece, but in uh, most all of my pieces. I just did a huge update on Redbubble. So now there's time pieces and the alluring darkness pieces there. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked out my Redbubble shop, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below so you can head over and check that out. So once again, and thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on my little artist journey. If you're brand new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye!